Uh, my apologies. Uh, we've had a number of issues that we've been dealing with that had to be resolved this evening. Uh, well, firstly, can I say uh, tonight uh, the people of Gundawindi face a very anxious evening. Uh, we are still uh, monitoring that situation very carefully, but as a precaution, evacuations have, are now being undertaken of the hospital and the nursing home in Gundawindi. Uh, we have uh, 61 patients between those two facilities that are being airlifted into either Inglewood or Warwick. Uh, the uh, local council in Gundawindi has made preparations and have evacuation centres prepared on higher ground. The town of Gundawindi has some 6,000 people uh, and we have uh, adequate provisions made in case uh, many of those may need to evacuate their homes tonight. Uh, this is a very finely balanced uh, assessment and calculation. Uh, Gundawindi has a levy bank of some 11 metres. The current predicted height is 10.85 metres. So we're talking a very, very small margin of error. And we're talking about a flood that is likely, because of its size, uh, to stay at that level for more than 24 hours. So the structural integrity of the levy has to also be considered. So people are working on modelling and monitoring, uh, measuring gauges down that river system to the finest possible degree, uh, but the people of Gundawindi tonight are no doubt wondering whether they'll be the next to see uh, some raging floodwaters. We send them uh, our best thoughts uh, and we reassure them that everything that can be done to, uh, to predict and to guarantee their safety is being done and preparations have been made. Tonight, as uh, people start to... Uh, uh, settled down for the evening, I wanted to do a couple of things. Firstly, I wanted to acknowledge the extraordinary efforts of the search and rescue uh, teams that are out in the Lockyer Valley. These teams are involved in an exhausting search over a stretch of waterways that measures 205 kilometres. Uh, they have located, uh, unfortunately, one, one deceased body earlier today, and we do expect that their efforts will locate more in the days to come. Uh, I do have uh, maps uh, of the area that they're searching uh, for those who would like that digitally afterwards. But tonight, as the rest of us, or as many of us, will settle down in our own beds, I wanted to acknowledge that there are now thousands of Queenslanders who will be settling down for the night, either in the, on the floors or the, the spare beds of their friends and their families, uh, or the many thousands who are now in evacuation centres. We have here in the southeast and into the Lockyer Valley some 3,000 people who will be bedding down on the floor of, in mattresses of an evacuation centre somewhere in the region. I want to say to those people in evacuation centres, I know that this is not an easy uh, experience for you. Uh, can I reassure you that you, these centres will be open for as long as you need them? that we will work with you individually because everybody's uh, circumstances are different. Every person in an evacuation centre will be individually uh, worked with to determine how we can get you back into your home as quickly as possible. And for some people, we acknowledge that that is going to take months and months and months and that you will need interim accommodation on a temporary basis. Today, we have sourced demountable uh, homes from across uh, Queensland and Australia. They will be making their way into Queensland and in some of our smaller towns, they will be a short, medium-term solution while homes are being rebuilt. So there is a big effort now being put into working with the 3,000 people who are in evacuation centres and with those people who are also uh, homeless potentially for some time but are currently staying with friends and families. This is a huge effort. But to all of you tonight who are settling down to an evacuation bed, uh, our thoughts are with you. Uh, I've been out in the evacuation centres uh, at QE2 Stadium today and uh, it really hits home when you visit uh, just how difficult it's going to be for several weeks to have families, uh, elderly people, people with disabilities in those circumstances. I also want to acknowledge the volunteers in order for these evacuation centres to run smoothly. We are feeding 3,000 people. We are providing beds for 3,000 people. Washing will have to be done. There is childcare and child act children's activities, medical services, all being provided. They are all being provided, uh, almost all of them, by volunteers. Uh, there is an army of people out there tonight who are, who are staffing soup kitchens, who are helping people uh, as they settle down for the evening. So thank you to all our volunteers. 
But one thing I really did want to say, we are now starting to see a bit of a problem at our evacuation centres, and uh, that is that people, good-willed people, are bringing numbers of donations of clothes and other household items into the centres. I'm going to have to ask you to stop doing that. We now have centres blocking up with bags full of these items. The people who are staffing our centres have no capacity to sort through this material uh, and it is starting to become a real problem. I know that you're all trying to help, but bringing bags of donated household goods and clothes to our evacuation centres is uh, unfortunately not the right way to go about it. So uh, our staff are, have their hands completely full, our volunteers have their hands completely full. Please, can we ask people to stop bringing those bags of donations? And similarly, organisations like uh, Salvation Army and St Vincent de Paul are having so many bags in front of their doorways of some of their, uh, their shops and offices that they cannot get into those places. Please, can everybody just hold for a little while? I know that you mean well, but if you could just hold back on some of that, uh, it would make uh, some uh, people's lives a lot easier. We are now also working very hard to equip and get moving with uh, restoring public services across all levels of government. This is a huge task because many of those service delivery outlets have been damaged. But the race is on now to have schools open uh, and a normal school time frame. Uh, we have, uh, on, on our current assessment, across Queensland, we have 60 schools uh, that have been uh, significantly damaged. We have seven TAFEs that have seen significant inundation. We have 19 teacher houses in, remote lo in some of our rural locations. And we have 86 kindergartens and childcare centres that are currently not accessible because of the inundation. So there is a, a very big effort and we are determined wherever possible to have school open on the normal day one of term this year. It is important to the in improving the strength and resilience of our communities that families can get kids back to school as soon as possible, children can be with their friends and parents can get on with all the jobs associated with rebuilding, dealing with their insurance company, dealing with their banks, starting the process of uh, finding tradespeople, etc. So uh, we are aiming to have schools start on day one this year. There may be a couple of schools where that may not be possible and we will alert people with plenty of notice of that next week. But right now the race is on and that's what we are uh, intending to do. How many demountables will you be sourcing for uh, these people? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't give you numbers on demountables. We've uh, made an approach uh, nationwide for everything that we can find. Uh, we don't see this... This is not a long-term solution. This is a short-term between the evacuation centre and being back in their own homes. But that might be a solution for three or four months. So uh, it is something that we think is necessary and to in do. In terms of Governor Windy, if uh, the levy is breached, how, uh, do you have any idea as to how much of the town will be flooded? That will depend on uh, a number of factors, on what the actual height is uh, and at what part it reaches. There are some particularly <coughs> low-lying parts of the town, as I understand it, on the western side, but there are, there are sections of the town on high levels. The evacuation centres are on those higher levels. Uh, so we do know that uh, the town, the local council and the local disaster management group are confident that if there is uh, those circumstances, they are ready for it. Do you want to add anything, Commissioner? I think. No, Premier, just one thing, if I could, and that is that um, many of the roads throughout Queensland are starting to reopen, uh, but they are in, damage, in a damaged condition, and as well uh, here in Brisbane, and I would imagine at Ipswich as well, uh, whilst roads are open, in many cases traffic lights aren't operating. So my appeal uh, to everyone is, uh, again, um, by all, only use the roads if you have to, uh, but please recognise that um, it, it may well be that the speed limits um, are, are not a true indication and we'd ask people to drive to the conditions of the road, not the speed limits. And particularly uh, we'd ask people to exercise great patience and courtesy to other road users. If, for example, it's a set of traffic lights that aren't operating, we'd ask people to be really patient and courteous at those uh, situations particularly and allow people to, um, you know, turn... Um, and, and we do really stress that um, uh, road safety is such an important issue at any time for all of us, uh, but particularly at the moment, and, and again, many of the roads are damaged, and until the traffic lights are back operating, 
please um, drive to the road conditions and drive with great, great patience, courtesy and consideration for other road users. Thank Premier, you. Premier, when will Mick Slater start uh, operating in the Brisbane area now that the, the, the Twin Peaks are today involved? Uh, we'll be working uh, those issues through uh, with Major General Mick Slater. Uh, clearly, the task that uh, I have given him has uh, increased exponentially in the last few days. Uh, we are now giving consideration to the entire recovery task, the role of Mick Slater in that uh, task, and how that then relates into the Brisbane and Ipswich areas. Uh, we are still in uh, emergency response mode, and uh, while we do expect to see the waters start to come down, the clean-up uh, is, as it has been managed in every other place, the clean-up will still be managed by the local disaster management uh, teams in Ipswich and in uh, Brisbane and be led by the councils in both of those areas. It's post that clean-up that we're really looking at the big logistical and infrastructure replacement rebuilding uh, challenges. Um, Premier, you've seen uh, a lot of um, devastation in many areas of the state, um, in your electorate also. Um, how is the situation affecting you personally now as a Brisbane resident? I also understand that your mother has been evacuated. How are you feeling now personally seeing this? I've been out on the streets of Brisbane for a little while this afternoon, including into the streets of my own uh, electorate and the suburbs that are uh, around my, my own home. And what I've seen is uh, many houses inundated. I've uh, been out there talking to locals and I think everybody's in a bit of shock. Uh, they, didn't, uh, they haven't seen these sorts of uh, images of our local streets before. Uh, so I've recognised some of the houses of my children's friends that are inundated and I know these families. So... Uh, it is, it's very emotional out there, and I think a lot of people are really feeling it. Uh, but there's equally just an incredible feeling uh, of neighbours coming out of, their str out of their houses, people are gathering in each other's front yards and on verandas, people are all saying, when can we get in and clean it up, when, how can we help each other? So there's a lot of love out there on the streets as well, and I th think we're all going to need it. And you must be working at 24-7, is your family, are they, are they faring okay? Uh, my family are absolutely fine and they're supporting me uh, in the role I have to play. Uh, what we're all thinking of is the families in many other parts of Queensland whose lives, uh, frankly, have been torn apart by this event and uh, it's going to take a very long, slow recovery, but we are absolutely up to the task and the sort of effort that you've seen in the last three weeks poured into this emergency response is the sort of effort you're going to see from me the police, our emergency teams, agencies of government, the defence and other levels of government uh, for as long as it takes to have Queensland back on its feet uh, and uh, everything that we can be. Has more power been restored to homes? Uh, we, are, we have seen some more power restored to homes, and I'm sorry I don't have exact figures for you, but uh, I'm advised by Energex that they are on track to meet the target they've set for themselves, and that is uh, 50,000 homes uh, taken, so put power back on uh, by about 10 o'clock this evening. Okay, thank you very much, folks.